Problem 5. Let f be a function that is twice differentiable for all real numbers. The table above gives values of f for selected points in the closed interval 2 to 13. Part A. Estimate f prime of 4. Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, I notice that 4 lies between the 3 and the 5. If I'm looking for a derivative, I'm really looking for the slope. So to get this answer, I'm going to use the slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then from here, my y values will be negative 2 minus 4 over 5 minus 3. That will give me negative 6 over 2, and that reduces to negative 3. That was worth, let's see, that's just worth one, one point. Okay, part B, evaluate the integral from 2 to 13 of 3 minus f prime of x. Show the work that leads to your answer. All right, I see a subtraction sign right here, which tells me I'm going to separate. So I'm going to get 2 to 13 of 3 minus the integral from 2 to 13 of 5 f prime of x. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and just evaluate this first one. The integral of 3 is 3x. I will evaluate it at 13 and 2. So I'll get 39 minus 6, which equals 33. And then this next part, first thing that I'm going to do is bump this 5 out front because it's just a constant. Now it's asking me to find the integral of a derivative, and I know when I take the integral of a derivative, that will just leave me with f. I do need to evaluate it at the end point, so it's going to be f of 13 minus f of 2. And there is a minus 5 sitting out front, so I'm going to carry that along. Okay, f of 13, if I look up on my chart, is equal to 6 f of 2 on my chart is equal to 1. So um, now I'm going to have minus 5 times 5, and that's going to give me minus 25. So 33 minus 25 will give me an answer of 8. Okay, that was worth 2 points. If you used <clears throat> the fundamental theorem of calculus, so you took the integral, and then you ended up evaluating it at its endpoints, and you showed that, you're going to get a point. And then if you got the answer of 8, you're also going to get another point. Okay, part C. Use a left Riemann sum with subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the integral. All right, left Riemann sum. Um, I could use, we could put something out front, but I do notice we're not going by equal intervals, so I'm going to have to do each part separately. So I'm going to start with from 2 to 3. The distance between those is 1, and then the left endpoint is going to be 1. Now plus the next one, the distance between 3 and 5 is 2. The left endpoint is 4. The next one, the distance between 5 and 8 is 3. The left endpoint will be negative 2. And then the last one, the distance between 8 and 13 is 5 times the left endpoint is 3. So now if I work this out, 1 plus 8 minus 6 plus 15. 1 plus 8 is 9, minus 6 is 3, plus 15 is 18. That part of the problem was worth two points. You got one for showing that you did a left Riemann sum, and then you're going to get one point for the right answer. All right, part D is the fun one. Here we go. Suppose f prime of 5 equals 3 and f double prime of x is less than 0 for all x in the closed interval 5 to 8. Use the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 5 to show that f of 7 is less than or equal to 4 and then use the secant line for the graph of f on 5 to 8 to show that f of 7 is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. All right, we have a ton going on in this part of the problem, so I'm just going to try to do a teeny little bit at a time. So I'm just going to tackle, try to tackle this first sentence first. Okay, so we're going to use the line tangent to show something. So that means I need a tangent line. So I'm going to put y equals mx plus b because that is an equation of a tangent line. All right, we know that m is a derivative. They told me that at 5, the derivative was 3. The x value in question is 5, and I know if I want to find the y value, when x equals 5, the y value, just by looking at the chart, is negative 2. So I'm going to get negative 2 equals 15 plus b. If I subtract 15 from both sides, I'm going to get b equals negative 17. So the equation of my tangent line is y equals 3x minus 17. And they told me to use that to show something about f of 7. So I'm going to, if I put in 7 for the x, I'm going to get 21 minus 17, which is 4. Okay, so, um, and I notice that this says something about being less than or equal to 4. Um, basically, what we're trying to decide is, is this an overestimate or underestimate or something like that. So if I'm thinking about the graph, um, the second derivative being less than 0 means the graph is going to be concave down. So if I draw a tangent line, 
and then I'm looking for a value somewhere on the curve. Please notice that the tangent line lies, lies above the curve, so my actual answer needs to be less than or equal to whatever answer I got for the tangent line. So I'm going to say, since the graph is concave down, the tangent line lies above the curve, Um, so f of 7 has to be less than or equal to whatever value I came up with, and in this case I did come up with 4, and that's what they were going to um, show me. So that would be my explanation. Now, so that was the first sentence. Okay, now we're going to basically do the same thing with the second sentence. This time it says to use the secant line for the graph to show that f of 7 is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. So same process. Um, this time to find a secant line, a secant line is just what you're used to finding. It's just a line that with two points. Okay, and since they told me 5 to 8, my two points are going to be 5, negative 2, and 8, 3. I got those from the chart. Okay, first thing we do when we want to find an equation of a line is find the slope. So I'll get 3 minus negative 2 over 8 minus 5. That will give me 5 over 3. So my slope is 5 thirds. And then remember, if I want an equation of the line, pick one of the points. I'm going to pick that one. So I'm going to have y equals mx plus b. My y is 3, my m is 5 thirds, my x is 8. So now I'm going to get 3 equals 40 thirds plus b. I'm next going to subtract 40 thirds from both sides. 3, if I got a common denominator, is going to be 9 thirds. So 9 thirds minus 40 thirds is going to be negative 31 thirds, and that will be my b. So the equation of my line is now y equals 5 thirds x minus 31 thirds. Again, we're trying to find out what's happening at 7, so I'm going to go ahead and plug 7 in. And if I do that, I'm going to get 35 thirds minus 31 thirds. So 35 thirds minus 31 thirds is 4 thirds. Okay, um, now if I'm thinking of that secant line, um, when we're doing the secant line, we want to show that that's going to be greater than or equal to the actual answer. So if I'm thinking, let's see here, um, we're trying to find it at 7. I'm going to draw the point 8, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3, and then 13, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 6. Okay, my line's going to look like this. Well, actually, that's the curve. The curve is going to look, and we know the curve is concave down. So let's see, concave down, it's got, the curve has to be going this way. And so my secant line, notice it's going like straight through. So notice my tangent line at 7, which is about, not my tangent line, my secant line is actually underneath the curve because the curve is concave down. So on this one, I'm going to say since the graph is concave down, the secant line is actually is below the curve, which means that the actual point, f of 7, actually has to be a value that's bigger than what we got. So this has to be greater than or equal to 4 thirds. All right, points on that one. Hopefully you at least got maybe a point for getting a tangent line or something like that. We're just going to try to get something out of this problem. Okay, if you found the equation of the tangent line, give yourself a point. If you came up with this explanation, give yourself a point. If you found the equation of the secant line, give yourself a point. And then if you were able to explain, give yourself a point. So sometimes, even though we might not have been able to get the points, if it says to use the tangent line, find a tangent line. If it says to use a secant line, find the secant line. Even if our explanation, if we can't get there, at least we're going to get some of our points for the problem.